subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Some of us might have heard that Singapore has now officially approved cultured meat or lab grown meat. This is the first time a regulatory authority has approved cultured meat in an effort to reduce factory farming and slaughter of animals and it is being hailed as a transformative moment for the meat industry. In this video, we'll take a look at how meat is grown in the lab, what bioreactors are and how this could change the meat industry and ensure food security as the world gears up to finally face the threat of greenhouse emissions from factory farming on a large scale. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Let's first look at some numbers. Globally, on a daily basis, over 3 billion animals are slaughtered for food excluding fish. Nearly 60% of all mammals on earth are livestock, that is cows and goats and lambs, etc. All red meat. Almost a million cows are slaughtered on a daily basis to provide beef. About 1.5 million sheep or lambs and 1.2 million goats are killed for food. About 130 million chickens are slaughtered for their meat every day. Among pigs, the number is about 4 million daily and among ducks, about 11 million, geese, 2 million and 2 million turkeys as well and even 3 million rabbits. All these numbers are animals being slaughtered on a daily basis for food. When it comes to fish, we kill about 2.7 billion fish in the wild and 300 million fish that are farmed daily. To get these kind of numbers, obviously, we have resorted to factory farming where animals are reared very close to each other, fed with hormones to fatten them up and are slaughtered at a large scale. The process is one of the largest sources of greenhouse emissions on Earth today and emits up to nearly 15% of all emissions. This is greater than the contribution of the entire transportation sector. And as the climate crisis worsens living conditions, even for these animals, emissions from factory farming are expected to go up even more. This is not news. We've known this for several years already. So to combat animal cruelty as well as the contribution of emissions from animal farming, increasingly scientists and food producers have become very interested in growing meat in the lab. This meat should taste the same as animal meat, but doesn't actually require you to kill animals. To understand the process of how this meat is developed, let's first understand what a bioreactor is. A bioreactor is a device that can enable and support biological activity and the biological environment within it. Basically, it is a setup within which scientists can conduct biological experiments without damage to living cells that are in the experiments or organisms or just biologically or chemically active molecules that are derived from living organisms, whether animals or plants. These devices are used for cell and tissue engineering and they're usually cylindrical in shape and made of steel. They typically hold up to thousand liters or more. Organisms or organic molecules or cells inside bioreactors are typically suspended in a liquid medium or grow attached to a solid medium. At this point, there are over 30 firms globally that are trying to develop lab-grown meat and these are present in countries like Singapore, US, Netherlands and Israel and many more. These companies use stem cells from a source animal as building blocks and then place these cells in petri dishes. Amino acids and carbohydrates are added to the petri dish to the cells that will help them grow and multiply, transforming into tissues and muscles because these cells have the DNA of the animal so they know how to grow and multiply into a larger quantity. These cultured cells will start to grow muscle fibers and reach a point where they resemble pieces of ground meat. It is at this point that they are ready to be processed and then eventually consumed. Just to clarify, you cannot grow an entire animal in the lab. The cells will not eventually become a full cow or a chicken or whatever animal. In fact, we grow human skins and human organs in a lab to replace animal testing, but we can never grow a full human in the lab using human cells. Even in IVF, in vitro fertilization or 
test tube babies, the fertilization occurs outside in a lab, but the embryo is put back in a human uterus for it to mature into an actual human being. Among the kinds of meat we can develop in a lab now, the most popular is of course beef. Biologists in Netherlands have used muscle stem cells from a cow which was cultured in a medium of fetal calf serum using the blood of a calf. The cells grew into about 40 billion muscle cells making about 20,000 strips of beef that the biologists were able to shape into a burger patty. Scientists say that just one tissue sample from a cow can help make nearly one lakh patties. Often, plant cells are also used in the process to stimulate and encourage growth. Growing meat in the lab was even tried by NASA in 2002 when the agency was able to grow fish meat in a lab using cow serum as a medium for goldfish cells to grow. Of course, none of these are commercially available just yet and they've been approved only in Singapore for now. But another byproduct of the growth of lab-grown meat is that we don't need to restrict the process to just meat. We can perform the same process for many animal-derived products. For example, we now have lab-grown milk. Milk is very easy to make in the lab because it primarily consists of water and about 20 other components with key proteins and fatty acids. Researchers in San Francisco bioengineered yeast to produce the same proteins that is found in dairy and created lab-grown milk. The same goes for cheese as well. And since these lab-grown products don't actually use any cells from an actual animal, lab-grown milk and cheese and other lab-grown dairy products can technically be vegan. Of course, lab-grown meat is not vegan, not yet, because of course it uses animal cells. Of course, the same process can also be extended to non-consumables, non-food items such as leather, which has also been produced in the lab. Now, it appears that we are at the cusp of a potentially scalable solution for multiple crises that have been brought about by our food habits. Compared to conventional beef, for example, lab-grown beef requires 45% less energy to cultivate, 99% less land use, of course, and releases 96% fewer greenhouse gas emissions. So lab-grown meat is definitely a more eco-friendly option and can guarantee food security for the future. However, there are still many hurdles to overcome to actually make lab-grown meat commercially viable. The first, of course, is the cost. The process is new, so it is relatively expensive. The scientists at Netherlands who made the burger patties say that the estimate for making those 20,000 strips of beef was $300,000 in 2014. This was six years ago. The costs now have dramatically fallen. Today, it is estimated that the same amount of meat can roughly be produced by most producers at about $600. A Dutch startup, in fact, claims that they can produce lab-grown beef with just $80. As more and more players enter the space and technological advances are made in the process, the costs are likely to fall even steeply over the next few years. The second hurdle is taste and texture. The meat, when grown in lab as well as when being processed later, has to be supplemented with several ingredients that will mimic and simulate the taste and texture of real meat. So in the early stages, it is likely that many won't find the taste of lab meat appealing enough unless it is extremely carefully and intensively developed. The third is safety. There is currently no reason to think that lab-grown meat is unsafe or has health hazards. This is what scientists and researchers say. However, any food still needs to be regulated and approved by regulatory authorities before it can be commercialized in multiple countries. And there are lots of conditions that go into that. A fourth hurdle is religious beliefs. Does lab-grown meat conform to traditional religious beliefs about how meat should be hunted and eaten in multiple faiths? And the last hurdle is the pushback from traditional meat producers as expected. A hot debate among this is how lab-grown meat should be labelled, whether it is truly meat or not. 
and this of course will again have to be dealt with by regulatory authorities. All in all, the future of food and meat is an exciting space to watch out for as rapid advances are made in the science and technology of growing meat in labs.